We're working from Life Sciences Paper 1 of November 2022. Moving now on to 3.2. The table below shows the recorded number. So this is just not the actual number. It's the recorded number of severe brain injuries per 100,000 people per year in different regions of the world. So we've got in this column regions of the world, certain regions, and in this column showing the different variable, we've got the number of severe brain injuries and our units are per 100,000 people per year. Before we get to the questions, what is Helen's rule? You make sure that you start negotiating with that, interpreting that picture, that graph, that table in this instance. So let's look carefully at it. We're not looking at the whole world. We're looking at Latin America, which is the, re the a region between North America and South America. We're looking at the USA and Canada. We're looking at Eastern Mediterranean. So we're looking at countries like Turkey and Cyprus, and we're looking at countries like Israel. Europe, where we're looking at countries like uh, Germany, France, Spain, and Africa, which is huge with many, many countries. And of course, South Africa forms part of that. And now we look at the number of a, a brain injuries. And remember, these are the recorded numbers. These are the numbers that authorities have had reported to them, maybe hospitals or research centers, clinics, and they've been able to compile a list of the kind of brain injury and the numbers. Okay, we've unpacked the table. Which region has the smallest number of brain injuries? We just have to name it. 900, 1,300, 890, 1,010, 800. So here we have the smallest number out of this list. And we move across then to what region is it? And we would write on our answer sheet or answer book, Africa, for one mark. Now I said to you, that Africa is a huge area compared, for example, to Europe or the Eastern Mediterranean countries. And yet, we've got the lowest number of brain injuries. So does that mean that the people in Africa are luckier or uh, we, we just don't hurt our brains as much? Or has it got something to do with this word, the recorded number? of severe brain injuries. And that leads us to our next question. Explain why this data may not be accurate for the region you named, which is Africa. Why might it not be accurate? And it all stems to this or around this word recorded. If you think about conditions in Africa, the wide spaces that exist between clinics or hospitals, the low number of clinics and hospitals and doctors in the area known as Africa, we start to get an idea that not all of the brain injuries are actually recorded. So we have to give two points here in our explanation. So we need to, to talk about the fact that these are the recorded injuries. And because of the size of Africa, because of the low numbers of clinics and hospitals and low number of doctors, we then would say, therefore, less brain injuries are reported and therefore recorded. And that could mean 
that that 800 is actually an inaccurate figure and it's probably far higher than 800. The next question says draw a bar graph to represent the data in the table and we have a total of six marks for that. I've already drawn the bar graph for you. In fact, this comes out of the memorandum for this question. So this is what your marker would have been looking for. First of all, we have to have a caption and there's one mark for the caption. The caption is like the title of this graph. The number of brain injuries in different regions of the world. Here is one variable and the number of brain injuries is another variable. In order to get this one mark, you must mention both variables. You can't just say this is a graph showing the number of brain injuries. All right, number of brain injuries where? When? You can't just say different regions of the world. What are we measuring in those different regions of the world? So we have to show both variables and then you get your mark. You're going to get a mark now for labeling the two axes, right? There's the mark. Brain injuries per 100,000 people per year. Look there, we don't just call it brain injuries, we give the units making up these brain injuries or making up this information. You would have to label regions of the world and if you labeled both of those accurately, you would get a mark. We've also got to scale the information and in terms of the x-axis, and a bar graph, that means placing the names of the different countries. If you took a ruler and you measured this, these different spaces, you would see that that space or distance is identical to that distance, and that distance is identical to that distance. In other words, you've scaled the graph correctly. You've made sure that it's not just a random placement of these, gra of these bars. You've specifically placed the bars in a, a, an ordered way. Our y-axis also has to be scaled. And here's the biggest downfall and mistake that lots of people make. They use these values directly. And the bottom of the graph or the y-axis will be named 800. And then they'll measure up a centimeter and they'll put 890. And they'll measure up a centimeter and they'll put 900. And all they're doing here is problematically scaling. We can't use this variable's figures. These are the figures that we are measuring. And you can't use them as the scale. We've got to say that our lowest number is 800. Our highest number is 1,300. And we've got to make sure that our scale goes from 800 to 1,300 and that we divide these uh, spaces correctly and equally. So you can see on the memo, we didn't even start at 800, we started at zero, and each centimeter is made up of 200 units. And you must make a little mark on the axis to show that that point there is 800 units. There's our mark for scaling. Now we need to plot our graph and our um, bars. Remember that because this is a discrete variable, there's no Europe and a half. There's no USA, Canada 
and two-fifths. They are discrete values. So that means we must leave spaces between the bars. And you're going to get one mark for showing that you've drawn a proper bar graph and not its cousin, the histogram. All right, so the histogram also has bars on it, but those bars are connected. You haven't drawn that. You've drawn a graph with spaces between the bars and they will check that if you read the information off the y-axis, you've actually plotted them correctly. And that is going to give us our total mark of 6 for our graph.